In this video, we're going to quickly show you how to do a voltage drop test on the starting system. Um, voltage drop testing on the starting system is very important. If you have a situation where a starter is cranking slowly, you might not have a bad battery or a bad starter, you might just have a bad connection. If you have a bad connection, which of course can be really common at battery terminals that are prone to, to corrosion and such, then you're not going to be able to flow as much current because of the resistance. And if you're flowing less current, that starter is going to crank slowly. So voltage drop testing the starter circuit is, is very important. Um, in another video, we, we cover voltage drop testing the charging system. Um, we're using the same vehicle for the, the starting system as we did for the charging system. This is a 2007 Chevy Malibu with a 3.5 liter V6. All right, so what we need is a digital voltmeter, which we have here, okay? And um, the other thing that we, we're gonna need to do to prepare this vehicle to do this test is we have to disable the ignition system or the fuel system because we're gonna crank the engine, but we don't want the engine to start. We wanna be able to let it crank for, you know, five or 10 seconds, maybe, maybe 15 seconds, um, so that we can get a reading. So we want to disable the, the vehicle from starting. Now what I've done actually with this vehicle is uh, instead of pulling the fuel pump relay or unplugging the coil pack or something like that, what I've done is I've actually, I've actually hooked up a remote start button. And what the, what the remote start button allows us to do is it allows us to, to crank the engine just by, just by pushing this button. So that makes it good if you're all by yourself working. But it's also good because without the key ignition switch being turned on, um, we are just we will will simply be looking at the um, you know the 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 current or the sorry the the voltage drop to and from the starter um, without having to have the fuel system active or the ignition system active. So using it using a remote uh, start button is is a good way to go and then you don't have to worry about disabling anything else it doesn't matter if the ignition switch is on we're just trying to flow current from the battery down to the starter and we're just looking for voltage drop in in that circuit alone so we're going to use the remote start button now the, we'll start off with our, our red lead from our meter okay we will take our we'll take our red lead and you can see it's hooked up to the the positive battery post okay now our negative lead is needs to hook up to the most negative point in the positive side of that starting system circuit. So the most negative point in our starting system circuit on the on the positive side of that circuit is at the, the B terminal at the solenoid. So that on this vehicle is deep down there. So we're gonna lift this vehicle up and then we will hook up our black lead to the um, to the starter. Okay, so here we are down at the starter, underneath the front of this vehicle. Our black lead, we've got it fished down through. Um, there's a couple things going on right up here. Uh, this terminal right here is the, the terminal that actually comes out of the solenoid. There's one right up, of, right up above it, right up here, and this, where this, uh, that clamp is connected, and that is our B terminal for the solenoid. Now this other, this other orange clamp right here is actually attached to the S terminal of the solenoid and that's our remote starter. So that's not necessarily part of this test, but this, this, clamp, this clamp here is going up to the, the other end of the positive battery cable and we have our black lead attached into, into that red clamp. Okay, so that's how we've got it, that's how we've got it hooked up here, down, down at the bottom right at the starter. So, with our leads hooked up, we can now crank it and see what our meter shows us. All right, we're looking at our meter. Leads are hooked up. Let's see what's going on on the positive side of the circuit. Now remember, it's always important when you're doing a voltage drop test that the circuit be active. The circuit has to be active. You can see we've got the leads hooked up and it shows zero, 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 zero. So, you know, there's no voltage drop, but the circuit has to be working because we have to be flowing current in order to look for voltage drop. So that's very, very important to remember. Um, when we're doing an alternator, the engine's running. When we're doing a starter, the engine has to be cranking. So I'm gonna take our, 
our remote start switch and we're going to crank this engine over for a little bit and let's see what happens. Okay, so we got about 0 0.14, 0 0.15 volts of drop on the positive side of this circuit. Um, so what's our specification? Well, once again, positive side of an electrical circuit, generally being, being somewhat generous, we are going to allow for a half a volt, so 0 0.5 volts. 0 0.5 volts of drop on the positive side of this circuit, and we're, we're far below that. So the positive side of this circuit has no resistance. It looks like the current's flowing just fine. So now we need to switch our leads and do the negative side of the circuit. Now we've got our red lead up here and normally we would take this red lead and we'd go down and attach it to the housing of the starter. But because of the complications in accessing the starter down below this vehicle, um, we're just gonna take this red lead and swap it over to the negative battery post. And then we'll go down underneath the car and we'll take that black lead and swap it to the housing of the starter. Now when we do the cranking test, it's going to give us a negative number, but it doesn't matter. It's the same number as it would be if we put the leads exactly where they're supposed to go. So we're not going to worry about that negative number. So for, for the sake of convenience um, and to make this test a little easier, we're just going to swap from the positive post to the negative post. Now let's go down and swap the other lead from the, the, the B terminal of the solenoid to the housing of the starter. So down underneath the vehicle, we took our black lead and we took it off of the, the B terminal of the solenoid and now it is attached to, it's actually attached to a bolt head on one of the, one of the bolts that, that hold the starter motor together. And that's fine. Yeah, it can literally be attached anywhere to the starter housing. Um, the only places I, I kind of avoid down here are the, the mounting bolts for the starter um, because you know, one of the places where we can have voltage drop is where those bolts mount or how the starter mounts to the, the engine. And if you mount it that, or if you clip that black lead onto one of the starter mounting bolts, like, like this one right up here, okay, um, that's, that's gonna have much better contact with the block. So we wanna make sure that the starter itself has good contact with the block. So we've got our lead down here hooked up. Let's go crank it again. Okay, we got both of our leads hooked up on the negative side of the starter circuit. I'm going to take our remote start button. We'll crank this thing over and let's see how the uh, see if we've got any resistance or voltage drop on the negative side of this starter circuit. Point zero six. Point zero six. So, what's the specification? Is that a good number? Point zero six. Specification on the ground side of this circuit, 0.2 volts. So 0.5 on the positive side, 0.2 on the negative side. So on the negative side of the circuit, if 0.2 is our maximum and we're at 0.06, then obviously there is no voltage drop on the negative side of this circuit. So, looks pretty good. Both the positive side and the negative side of the circuit are good. We know that the, the ground cables are good. We know that uh, the, the positive cable is good, all the connections in between, we know that all of those things are good. So that is how you test voltage drop on the uh, starting system. Okay, pretty simple test. Ought to be done any time a starter is replaced in order to make sure that, um, that everything is, all the, all the wiring is good um, and that uh, that you're not missing something and to make sure that you're, you're thorough in your diagnosis and of course that's what we want to do because we want to we want to be accurate as automotive technicians we want to do things the right way